Welcome to the Toffee Blues, your source for all things Everton. I'm, I'm bringing you another 24-7 report tonight, bringing you up to speed with all the latest Everton transfer news. In the week where it was announced, of course, that the Premier League will be returning in just three weeks' time. So Everton will be back in our lives very soon, for better or worse. But tonight it's all about transfers, and to start off tonight's show, apparently we have a new main transfer target, if Mundo Deportivo in Spain is to be believed. Jean-Claire Tadebo is now apparently Carlo Ancelotti's main transfer target. He's on loan at Schalke from Barcelona at the moment, and obviously we've got a good working relationship with his parent club Barca, and Mundo Deportivo cite that as a reason why this could come to pass. Of course, like I say, he's on loan at Schalke, and I'm I watched him play in the Bundesliga earlier today, actually, against Werder Bremen before doing this show, and I thought he looked poor, to be honest. Certainly not better than our current centre-back pairing, what I'd say is our first three centre-back pairing of Yeri Mina and Mason Holgate. I don't think he's an improvement on either of those. And If he's to come in and be a backup, then by all means, but we can't afford to be spending big by the looks of it on backups at the moment. So I don't think Tadebo is ready to go into the straight straight into the start in 11 at present, so I think we should pass on that. Moving on, and the next rumour is according to Sports Lens. They cited what they call a very reliable Portuguese football journalist. And according to that very reliable journalist, Everton have made a move for Wendell, the Brazilian centre midfielder who plays in Portugal at the moment with Sporting CP. That move is said to be around 15 million euros, the bid that Everton have apparently made. And for a decent young player, it's not a bad price. And possibly, I think it's the kind of price that, given the financial climate in the midst of lockdown or post-lockdown, we might have to accept that 15 million is the kind of market that we can afford. Especially if the rumours coming out of the Liverpool Echo is anything to go by regarding our possibly reduced spending power this summer. Some developments now on the Mexican winger Jesus Corona, who has been linked before to the club. His agent, Matias Bunja, has told Mexican paper Medio Tiempo that he has spoken to Chelsea about them possibly signing the player who has a seemingly endless list of potential suitors. These are exactly the kind of moves that I think could be affected by the distortion in the transfer market. Many of these possible suitors may need to pull out of their interest in players who maybe there's teams who can afford him more than others at the moment. We'll have to wait and see how these kind of transfer rumours develop when the window reopens and we'll see what kind of spending power we will have and just how badly we've been affected. Hopefully it's not too bad, but we'll have to wait and see. Moving on, Birmingham Live report that Aston Villa will face competition from us for shock horror. A Napoli player, and that is Jose Callahan. Callahan is a 33-year-old Spanish winger. He's been in Naples since 2013. And at this stage in his career, I can't see a move like this making sense. Certainly the type of player profile that Marcel Brands likes to bring in. Regardless of the obvious Ancelotti connections, I don't see why we should ever expect to see this kind of transfer happen in the summer. Now, another Serie A-based veteran who has been linked is the Uruguay defensive stalwart, Diego Godin. He's now at Inter Milan, of course, after spending a very successful number of years at Atletico Madrid. Now, Calcio Mercato say that Inter would consider selling him for around six to eight million. Now, this depends on how much money, like I say, we have to spend in the next window. I don't think it should be a priority sign, and certainly I'm not sure whether an aging player as good as he has been is the right move as a priority signing. But if we had enough money left over, I would consider this one. He's one of the most composed and dominant defenders of his generation. He may be past his best now, but he's still one of the best leaders about. And those kind of leadership abilities are sorely lacking in our current squad. So maybe one of these kind of signings, it could be one for the deadline, maybe once we've got the main business done and see what we need first, get that in and, if there is enough left, like I say, I would maybe sanction a move like this for a player like Godin's experience alone. That could maybe help us kick on a bit. Finally, Jesse Lingard has been speaking to Adidas's Instagram account, and he said that he wants to stay at Old Trafford and commit his future to Manchester United after reported interest from Everton, among others. 
And that is just as well because I don't want him anywhere near Everton Football Club, full stop. So let's just leave it at that on that front. And on that bombshell, we'll call it a day for transfer news. Let us know what you think about these transfer stories with a comment below. And also let us know your opinions on the return of Premier League football as well, because obviously it's a very big talking point and plenty of debate around whether it's a bit too soon, whether it could have been brought back later, what should have been done, what shouldn't have been done. Let us know what you're thinking about the return of the Premier League in the, in three weeks' time. On top of that, give this video a like as well. Give us a subscribe to the channel. Keep tuning into the Toffee Blues if you want to keep seeing great Everton content while you're staying at home. But that's all from me. So until next time, thank you for watching on the Toffee Blues. <laughs>